So I said we're going to want to talk a little bit more about observability. It really is a hip new term. And, you know, of course, we all are super hip here, right? And we all like new stuff. New stuff always brings something new to the table. Uh, so what is new here? Uh, well, there's uh, two things. First, we released a new observability solution, as you know. We will talk about it, and in fact, we'll see a demo later. But first, you know, let's talk a little bit about theory. So, so here you can see the definition of the term observability. This term has its origins in the control theory space. And uh, not to geek out too much here, but uh, there's actually a lot of super interesting stuff to dig into in control theory and feedback systems. And, uh, you know, you should all look at it someday, maybe on the weekend or so. But uh, so the basic thought here is that our systems are, of course, complex. They're very complex. And that the best chance we have to understand them is to approximate their internal states in time by looking at their externally observable outputs. And, and so that's how we come to the term observability. Now, that's obviously a mouthful. So let's try to break this down a little bit. Um, so here are our two you know, very complex systems. We cannot possibly know what's going on in those heads of theirs, right? All we know is that you know, they are, of course, very good dogs. But what are they pondering? Turns out these systems also have external outputs. So, so think of this as telemetry, your logs, your metrics, your traces, your net flow, your borks. This is what we can observe. And of course, on top of the telemetry, we have context. We must have the context, otherwise things get very, very complicated. The context, of course, is also observable and needs to be collected. So here, we have a Frenchie and some sort of Greyhound. The Frenchie is thinking, obviously, ha ha ha, about cheese. No surprise there. The Greyhound turns out to be a, an Italian Greyhound, and so, of course, you know, all he wants is his spaghetti. And trust me, I specifically didn't use German dogs here because uh, we cannot possibly get into what those are thinking because this is ultimately a, a family affair, right? So along with the control theory, there is also the observability creation myth. By now we have all heard this uh, probably many times, probably too many times, the famous three-legged stool, ox, metrics, and traces. Uh, all of them are important. And uh, with tracing now released as part of our observability solutions, uh, you have that part covered as well in SOMO. Fundamentally, though, we believe that it is not about the three pillars. We fundamentally believe that while the term observability has its place, observability is just a means to an end. And the end, of course, is reliability. We've already talked about why this is so important at the beginning of this session. It is not called systems observability engineering for a reason. It's called systems reliability engineering for a reason. So finally, here is the big all-encompassing diagram. Observability provides the raw telemetry. What is being observed are entities, and uh, those entities are part of a deployment topology. This is a logical and, you know, maybe if you are unlucky, uh, in some cases, even physical model of your system. Uh, this provides contextual information so that you can reason over the signals and the telemetry, where they're coming from and what they're trying to tell you. All of this is in the service of reliability, however. You need to be able to monitor your systems using those signals. That's why they're important. Ideally, you automate this to an extent uh, or to the maximum extent possible by using alerting. Of course, you know, we will also often manually inspect and sometimes have to manually monitor our systems and ultimately human intuition is still important. So having all this data at your fingertips is incredibly important. And then you have to figure out what the heck is going on. Uh, nothing you know, quite like a scalable analytical planetary scale database uh, that allows you to dig deep into the logs and, and that allows you to slice and dice and, and analyze them to get to the root cause, because after all, uh, you know, logs are uh, not just the most voluminous data source, but also often the one uh, that actually has the root cause, you know, somewhere hidden in it. And uh, we will see this again later in our demo. Okay, and at this point, we're going to make it even more interesting. I've actually been looking forward to this. Joining me now is Abi Kana, who is a product manager for our observability solution. As you know, we've released a pretty major new observability solution that adds for the first time distributed tracing facilities and also introduces our entity-based navigation approach. There is also a completely new unified alerting subsystem under the covers. So, so hey there, Abi, thanks for joining. Nice studio you have there. But uh, let's talk brass tacks. You have been an engineer and you've been at DevOps and you've even run your own company and, and you are now part of our product management team. In the end, all this telemetry is fine and all, but it is really only truly useful if we can use it to solve real world end-to-end -end problems. Uh, you've been thinking a lot about the troubleshooting process. So tell us a little bit more about how we have to look at this. Hey there, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, I think it fundamentally comes down to thinking about how do we keep the systems we're running reliable. So let's take a look at the traditional troubleshooting process. 
Okay, I can see this. Makes sense. Uh, we start from finding out and then we do the diagnosis, uh, we restore service and we ultimately, uh, you know, hopefully we will be able to go back and figure out the root cause. So, um, you know, Crown Talk Day is real and, you know, we go through this uh, on a daily basis. So, you know, but maybe with Sumo we can help make it a little bit more bearable or, or maybe I should say hoggable. But uh, notwithstanding, you know, the wheel of doom here, uh, you know, you brought us a little demo as well. So, um, you know, before we jump into the demo, describe real quick, you know, what we're going to be looking at and, uh, you know, what sort of, uh, you know, system we're going to look, look at in, in this demo. Sure. So we're running three applications today in this system. They're going to be running on top of Kubernetes, on top of AWS. We've got an account service, a transaction service, as well as a payment service that all talk to an RDS database. Specifically in our example, we've got a payment service that talks on top of Kubernetes to an account service that then talks to a flaky RDS instance. Oh, this is most excellent, sir. Uh, I predict we're going to make bank with this. Uh, but now, of course, the whole thing uh, suddenly starts barfing. Uh, and this is where our demo begins. Let's cue the demo. As you can see here, we've got a PagerDuty notification that tells us that the SLO has been breached. We've now been higher error rates than we've expected. Inside of this notification itself, we've got a bunch of context about what's going wrong, what subsystems might be affected, and most importantly, a link that allows us to drive in deeper and enter Sumo Logic to start troubleshooting and examining the problem. As soon as we enter Sumo Logic, we're already surrounding the time frame as well as the context of the incident itself. We can see information about how long the errors have been happening, outliers that help us understand the trends. But most importantly, we're able to actually see the customers that are affected so we can reach out to our support team and actually make sure that the customers that are seeing the worst behaviors are supported immediately. Christian? Right, and this is really key, right? So, uh, you know, in the end, you know, there's a lot of telemetry that we need to worry about, but uh, it's ultimately all, uh, you know, on behalf of somebody or somebody's service. So, you know, being able to, uh, you know, immediately, you know, go and look after those customers is obviously key. And now we can actually break down that error rate by pod, so we get a slightly deeper view of where this error is coming from. Which workloads running on this Kubernetes cluster are actually seeing these issues? Whether that be hotspotting by CPU or memory, or hotspotting by the error rate itself, we can locate the red pods that we need to pay attention to and drive deeper into. Clicking into one of these red pods, we're able to actually bring out more detailed information about the inf uh, pod itself, looking at summary information that describes the actual values, or actually shifting over to an entity-based view where we're looking at that deployment, that pod in context of where it sits in that Kubernetes cluster. And we're able to see key KPIs that help us understand the health of that system. So is the deployment healthy? Is the cluster healthy? Is the namespace healthy? This allows us to build context on which piece of the system we need to go focus in on and where we could dive in deeper. And since sometimes we need a kind of deeper entity rich view, we can also dive into the entity specific dashboard that enables us to get a full 360 view of what's happening inside of that deployment. Christian? Right, and this entity orientation is really key, right? And we've talked about this uh, for a long time, about the need to get the context, about the need to derive the context from metadata and to ultimately, you know, drive via sort of a topological view so that you can see what your entities are doing. And right here in Explore, we're able to see the actual context of that deployment inside of the namespace, inside of that cluster, allowing you to browse the context itself. But sometimes we need to dive into the transactions, specifically like in this situation, where you've got connection refused error between two services. And now we need to understand the actual relationships between how those services talk to each other. Driving into traces, we're able to transfer over that metadata, transfer over that time range, keep that troubleshooting context alive. And we're able to add in a few extra filters around errors um, just to bring out the right trace that we need to go examine. That filters our trace list below and enables us to start diving one step deeper into what spans might actually be causing or be a part of that story as to why that connection is failing. Clicking into the span itself, we're build, we build out the span overview here that allows us to see each individual span broken down, and we can follow the set of errors down to the last span in the list. Pulling over that same list, we're able to see the infrastructure tab describing, once again, the entity that produced that span. Clicking on raw logs, we're able to drill right into the logs so we can further our deep dive into the troubleshooting elements and try to find out what the actual root cause might be. Christian? Well, this is perfect. Uh, you know, now we've basically went uh, from you know the alert you know to the root cause, and we have not really written a single query. Not that I don't like writing queries, but sometimes, uh, especially if it's early in the day or early in the or late at night, it's just so much easier if you're able to navigate via clicking around. And 
I think uh, you know we, all of us using this as Sumo. I've already you know greatly benefited from this, uh, and you know we're super uh, super excited uh, to be able to uh, you know to have this in the hands of our customers now. Thanks very much, Abi. All right, and uh, that's all, folks. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, th that's it. That concludes Illuminate uh, 2020. Uh, you know, like big virtual hug to everybody, and really happy that you've been able to, uh, uh, you know, to be here today. Hope you got a lot of value out of it. Uh, and uh, you know, that's it from us. Thank you very much. <laughs>